In part 2 of this project, we are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, and program the D1 SOC development board and see how our design works on an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. After we synthesize the top module, we should be able to see something like this. Let's create a new Quartus project and program the FPGA. You need the master folder like we used in the other projects. And inside it you need to have the following folders. In RTL we have the Verilog source files. In Sim we have the model sim simulation that we did in part 1. And in Synth we are going to create the Quartus project. Let's open Quartus. And let's start the new project wizard. Next, change the folder. We type here project. We browse for the Verilog files. You need to select only the RTL files, not the test benches. Next. Now we select the FPGA model. I will select it from here because this is my board. Next. And finish. Select files. Select this file. Right click and set a stop level entity. Now we do an initial compile to see if our Verilog files are correct. This process may take a while and it depends on your PC configuration. Ok, the synthesis process seemed to finish successfully. Let's look at the critical warnings. So, it says here that it needs a project.sdc which is a synopsis design constraint file. Let's create one for this project. You need to go to tools. Timing Analyzer, File, New SDC File. And for this project, you need to paste this code. To oversimplify the explanation, it means that the tool now knows that the port clock will have a clock signal with a frequency of 50 MHz. We save this, we write here Project, Save, Close, and close this also. Now let's see if this step helped us remove these critical warnings. As you can see, your project.sdc file appears here. We start again the compile. We click this icon. And as you can see, the critical warnings related to the project.sdc are now removed. Now the single critical warning that we have, it tells us that our RTL is not connected to the FPGA pins. Let's solve this also. Remember that this step depends on your FPGA board. I will connect with the pin locations from the D1 SOC datasheet. Click on Assignments and Pin Planner. After you finish assigning the pins, it should look similar to this. Now we close this and we synthesize again. The synthesis process finished again. Now we don't have any critical warnings. These warnings can be skipped because they are of decreased importance. Let's see how our RTL code synthesized. We open the RTL viewer. And voila, this is how your RTL top module synthesized in this schematic. Here you have the debouncer. That was explained in a previous project. Here we have the blinky LED module that is helping us creating a 2 Hz frequency for our pseudo random numbers. Here we have the Edge Detect module. As you can see, the input ports and the output are correctly placed over here. Next we have the Delay Flip-Flop, which is over here. Outpulse, which is modeled by this AND gate. And then we have the Output Flip-Flop. Both flip-flops use Asynchronous Reset N. Here we have the Enable signal for the LFSR, which is written in the top module. And here we have the LFSR. The feedback is this 4-bit XOR gate. And all the other flip-flops are a shift register. In the end we have the decoders that are controlling the 7-segment displays. 
That's it, so you managed to transform this Verilog RTL code into a real circuit that was synthesized on an FPGA. Let's program the FPGA board now. We press Auto Detect, Change File, select Project.SOF, click here, and press Start. Now your FPGA is successfully configured. If you like this project, and you would like to see other projects, please leave me a comment and press the like button. Let's check out now how the linear feedback shift register works on the D1 SOC FPGA development board. Initially, the 7 segment display shows the hexadecimal value of the seed. This is 0x5EED, or visually seed. If we press the reset button, you can see that nothing happens. Now we enable the module. You can see that whenever the period of the blinky LED module expires, you will get a new hexadecimal value of the linear feedback shift register. If you want, you can play with the period of the blinky LED module to change the display speed of the linear feedback shift register. If we clear the value of the enable signal, you will see that the LFSR will have a constant value. If we set back the enable, it will start working again. If you press the reset, you can see that the value returns to the initial seed value. If you release the reset, it will start working again. If you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe. Congratulations! You finished the Linear Feedback Shift Register FPGA project. I have a challenge for you. Change the seed to 0x CAFE and the LED frequency to 4. Resynthesize and program your FPGA. This tutorial took a lot of time and effort so I would really appreciate from you if you would hit the like and subscribe button. If you like this tutorial and you're interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.